So, hi everyone, welcome to DEFCON CZ uh, 2022. My name is Lenka and I'm the moderator for this session. Uh, and next we have Sarish Pandit and Parv Koswami with the emergence of uh, in-vehicle OS. Uh, there will be time for your questions at the end. You can uh, interact in the session chat and write the questions in the Q&A section. And uh, there will also be some poll questions for you. Uh, Sarvesh Pandit is a principal technical training developer and a part of uh, PNT Associate Experience team at Red Hat. Uh, he had developed uh, technical training modules for OpenShift, uh, virtual, virtualization, OpenStack, kernel, and networking group. Uh, he had joined Red Hat as a platform intern and uh, prior to Red Hat, he was a part of the telecom industry for almost three years. Uh, he likes to organize, participate, and collaborate in uh, open source communities and events. And Parth Koswami is working as a technical training developer at Red Hat and mostly uh, works with uh, Kubernetes and networking. Uh, he's an open source enthusiast and uh, contributes to open source by hosting meetups and interacting with the community. So, uh, without any further delay, I'm giving a word to Parth. Thank you, Lenka, for the introduction. Hope I'm audible. Uh, again, uh, thank you, folks, for joining uh, uh, this session. And uh, let's let's start with the outline of this session. Okay, so we'll start with uh, by by understanding what exactly uh, the shift that that is we are experiencing in the automotive industry. Uh, we'll uh, speak about a couple of ongoing auto, uh, autonomous vehicle projects. Then we'll see how the community response is and the contribution to the open pilot project. We'll see what are the challenges and uh, opportunities in the automotive sector. And then Sarvesh will in introduce us to the uh, in-vehicle OS. Uh, he will speak about the important industry standards and certifications and how uh, we as uh, uh, developers and uh, in individual contributors can get involved uh, with the projects. All right. Uh, over the last two, three decades, the automotive industry is kind of undergoing some shifts and changes. I remember around 10 years ago, there were these newly launched electric vehicles, which would emit pollutants twice as less as normal IC engines. These battery powered vehicles were very compact, mostly suited for uh, two persons with less to no luggage capacity. Then we saw this uh, concept of autopilot or advanced driver assistance system, abbreviated as ADAS, being introduced in some premium high-end uh, cars. The ADAS would include cruise control. It would provide alerts, signals, and warnings uh, to driver uh, while driving, and also some functions that would help the driver park their vehicle. Uh, there is no doubt that this resulted in an increased overall uh, car and road safety. Now we are heading towards an era where we are seeing lots of big technology companies entering the automotive industry and uh, developing autonomous vehicles. These cars are no less than a robotic car that would self-drive uh, from point A to point B without any human interaction or human intervention. Next. Uh, yeah. Uh, so who, who are in this uh, autonomous vehicle market? Uh, to build an ecosystem for the autonomous vehicles, we must understand that what exactly is needed. So the fleet must be connected to the cloud uh, for data sharing and quick processing. The vehicles would need powerful processors and batteries. It would also require the AI and ML capabilities and an OS to look after all these processes. Uh, hence, big technology and cloud companies are the obvious choice for providing such an ecosystem. Going a step further, the car would also need a smart infotainment system with maps, weather updates, voice assistance, camera, Wi-Fi, you name and whatnot, and internet connectivity, touchscreen panel, and hence major mobile phone manufacturers are also coming up with their own autonomous vehicle products. And then we have the existing uh, traditional car manufacturers uh, whose car we have been driving uh, since our child, uh, since the time we learned to uh, drive a car. And uh, these car manufacturers have decades of experience in building and manufacturing cars. Even these companies are looking, obviously, to get tied and partnered up with IT and cloud companies and offer a product with self-driving capabilities. To better un understand why we need an in-vehicle OS, 
first let's talk about some of the existing products and developments going around in the autonomous vehicle industry uh, this is zoox it was founded in the year 2014 it is create uh, so zoox is a company that is creating an entirely new autonomous vehicle targeted at the robo taxi market uh, the company's approach is different from the other tech companies its approach is basically centered around the fact that a retrofitted vehicle is not optimized for uh, autonomy so this vehicle is fully autonomous and electric which is built for riders and not for drivers uh, there is no driving seat uh, it is bidirectional which means it has no front or back it cannot uh, it i mean it can go either way as needed uh, so pickups and drop offs becomes seamless it becomes a bit easy um, the uh, zoox will uh, zoox is trying to provide its product as a uh, mobility as a service in dense urban environments where there are space constraints uh, the vendor will be handling the driving uh, charging maintenance and up upgrades for their fleet of vehicles the rider will simply pay for the service next we have waymo unlike zoox which creates autonomous cars Uh, Waymo is a company that develops autonomous driving technology. Uh, it operates a commercial self-driving taxi service called Waymo One. Uh, it it also develops driving technology for use in other vehicles, including delivery vans and tractor or trailer uh, trailers for delivering and logistics. So Waymo Via is the trucking division of Waymo. Uh, in other words, uh, Waymo One is for moving people, whereas Waymo Via is for moving goods. then we have tesla autopilot uh, it's basically a suite of adas features uh, offered by tesla its features are lane centering traffic aware cruise control autonomous uh, automatic lane changes semi autonomous navigation on limited access uh, freeways self parking and the ability to summon the car from a garage or parking spot one big difference between tesla's autopilot and uh, waymo or zoox is that in all of these features the driver is responsible and the car requires constant supervision so this is where the differentiation is uh, this software was developed with an intent to reduce accidents caused by driver negligence and fatigue from long time uh, long long time driving now that we have seen what these cars are capable of doing let's talk a bit about the open pilot project uh the ada software currently which is being used uh, uh, is mostly proprietary in nature which we obviously do not want so this why we do not want this increases because it increases the possibility of vendor locking uh, which more ca car which most car manufacturer also do not want to get into hence many car manufacturers are headed towards the uh, this open pilot project uh, which is developed by coma and are uh, coming up with their own versions of adas uh so what exactly this open pilot project is it is an open source driver assistant system uh, we'll talk about its functionality in the next slide but for now just understand that this product uh, project is basically used to modify your existing car uh, not in a mechanical hardware way but uh, by increasing the computing power adding sensors to receive data and other continuously updated driver assistance features Uh, to be able to run it run this project in your car you would need to install open pilot on a device called coma 3 which is its latest version as of uh, january 2022 we have uh, shared the link to, to its github page in the reference slide uh, moving ahead let's take a look at what open pilot is capable of doing Uh, so currently open pilot performs the functions of adaptive cruise control meaning the vehicle uh, will maintain a safe fall in distance and stay within the speed limit uh, it is capable of uh, doing automated lane centering which helps in relieving the driver from the task of steering uh, then forward collision warning lane departure warning which is kind of self explanatory i believe so uh, open pilot is capable of uh, functioning for a growing variety of supported car makes models and model years uh, because every vendor will come up with its own uh, uh, way of building a car so the open pilot project has to adjust to the car makes the models and even the model years uh, then in addition while open pilot is engaged a camera based device uh, driver monitoring feature uh, 
uh, alerts the distracted and kind of drowsy drivers so this again increases the safety of the uh, overall car and the and the driver as well now let's see how to contribute to open pilot uh, open pilot is as stated earlier developed by coma and by many community users uh, there are a couple of ways to contribute to this project pull requests and issues both are welcome on their github pages you can also join discord to discuss uh, car ports most car makers have a dedicated channel for this again related links can be found in the reference page uh, now if some of us are curious to explore more about this project and try it out for real we can add open pilot support in our cars to use open pilot in a car you would need four things first is the software is itself which is free and available on github page second is a car uh, from one of the 150 supported car list cars listed on the project's uh, github page uh, if your car is not supported but has at least adaptive cruise control and lane keeping assist it's likely uh, that it should be able to run the open pilot project Next is a supported device to run this software. Uh, this can be a Coma 2, Coma 3, or if you would like to experiment a bit more, an Ubuntu computer with uh, webcams would also work. Lastly, a way to connect to your car uh, with, with a Coma 2 or 3, you, you need only a car harness. A car harness is an uh, universal interface to your car. All right. Now that we have talked about paradigm shifts in the automotive industry, discussed a couple of major players in the industry, talked about ADAS and its open source option. Let's now delve uh, deeper into the subject, which will start by knowing what exactly an in-vehicle OS is. Over to you, Sarvesh. Thank you, Par, for sharing an interesting open source project called Open Pilot Project. Uh, so before going into uh, the need of uh, in-vehicle OS, first understand what exactly uh, is in-vehicle OS. We have seen just uh, Open Pilot is a driver assistance system, but in-vehicle OS is a kind of a software platform for the automotive application that can serve as de facto standards. So in simple terms, if we talk about OS, a bare metal or a virtual machine system, that would be capable of running customers' applications as a containers. The main goal of creating an in-vehicle OS is like uh, that it should incorporate modern ideas around the workload orchestration, secure process isolation, consideration of mixed critical workloads, uh, field updatable, and continuously certified for the functional safety. So let's uh, identify the challenges in the uh, automotive industry. So basically, uh, big auto manufacturers are concerned about the transformation of the tech industry uh, going through and advanced innovation is happening at those companies. Parth uh, already shared a few examples around the tech companies who are working on autonomous vehicles. So what these companies are doing is they have their own internal chip teams which use the license building blocks from the best chip in the market to innovate rapidly and effectively and creating a competitions for big automakers. So manufacturers also uh, have to accumulate a huge amount of data for a machine learning technology associated with the driverless systems to work. That can be a challenge for a manufacturer. And, and for the development of ADAS and unmanned vehicle, it is necessary to ensure as well the compatibility of all the systems and softwares inside the smart car that can think and communicate with each other and other vehicles as well. It is also important to keep the final product or final uh, cost of the product of a car with an ADAS or an man cars. It has to be at least slight premium to the existing pricing standards uh, of the car. There is also a challenge uh, to decide how the safety of automated vehicles should be and tested who would be testing and by whom. And when the data is a data is involved, there's also a chance of a cyber breach activity as well. So we have just seen the uh, challenges in the automotive industry, but let's see the opportunities uh, which we can use to address those challenges. So for a uh, standard automobile manufacturers, uh, are looking for the way we can compete the uh, tech for our mindset of the industry disruptions, which is happening. The manufacturer has to need to think about uh, decreasing the requirement of a human travels to create a safer roads for pedestrian 
bicycles and two wheelers. The most high profile way data is shaping the automotive innovation is through the automation of the driving experience actually. So uh, manufacturer, manufacturers have begun to incorporate the ADAS system into their vehicle, which is all right now, which is already happening with existing car as well. We can see those kind of to create a convenient and safer experience for the drivers. Manufacturers must be able to also quickly contextualize, correlate, analyze the hundreds of terabytes of daily to extract a value from a data while the test vehicle travels millions of the miles. As data and digitalization is there, are helping auto manufacturers to identify the manufacturing errors and faulty parts in their early stage, thereby reducing the cost and time spent in uh, building and manufacturing the final product. There is also push uh, to improve the driving experience with the connected cars as they share the data in a real time through the consistent connections to the data centers and public cloud providers. So we have seen this opportunities and a lot of challenges. So we have seen a lot of data related things. So we need OS, we now know. So the automotive computing world is likely a many other industries, like is going through a lot of transformation and advanced computing facilities within the car. As vehicles become increasingly more like a mobile data centers, from advanced driver assistance systems to automated vehicles to infotainment system, the operating system plays a very fundamental role in resulting a software star. This is where creates opportunity for the Linux based operating system, such as CentOS to lead the transition from the car as an isolated set of embedded systems into a cohesive intelligent edge device. Uh, there is another one uh, which is like, a, these are all open source projects. Uh, the second one is automotive grade Linux. And the automotive grade Linux is a kind of a collaborative open source project that brings together automakers, suppliers and technology companies for the purpose of building a Linux based open source software platform for automotive applications. And the main advantage of AGL, it addresses all software in the vehicle, starting with infotainment system, instrument cluster, heads up display, telematics, connected car, advanced driver assistance systems, functional safety, and autonomous driving. Uh, the main motto behind this uh, is like adopting a share platform across the industry reduce the fragmentation and allows automakers and suppliers to reuse the same code base, which leads to rapid innovation and faster time to market for the new products. Like we know how open source uh, creates a faster innovation. Then there is a third uh, project which is related to connected car. The connected vehicle system alliance is an open collaborative and impactful technology alliance, accelerating the full potential of the connected vehicles. And there is a one fun fact. If you like a remote control car, then you can check self-driving car project uh, called as Donkey Car, which is also open source. And it is a worth exploring. You can learn a lot of self-driving car related things. Then uh, when uh, you're making any automobile or automobile related products, the standards and certifications are required. So one of the important requirements for in-vehicle OS project is like being ISO 262 certified. Any offering in an autonomous industry is expected to comply with this ISO 262 standard to be accepted by the broader automotive vendor community. ISO 262 defines the functional safety for automotive equipment and addresses the possible hazardous caused by the malfunctioning of the electronic and electrical system in the passenger vehicle. Automotive safety integrity uh, level ACIL is a risk classification scheme defined by the ISO 262 uh, functional safety for the road vehicles is a standard. The main goal of a certification is to prevent a safety related application from failing. And a part of this uh, is preventing uh, unsafe application from interfering with a safe, ap safe application. So let's take an example of uh, what can be the unsafe and safe application. For example, when you lock your car and the and that controls the turn signal lights. You don't want that car key lock application to control these lights while you are driving. And then how does certification is performed is like certification is performed via a partnership between a software vendor and a certification vendor. These vendors are independent and compete for the business. 
so they have the strong incentives to perform valid legitimate safety analysis to avoid any reputational damage if they certify junk and that junk fails then they suffer so there is also an ongoing efforts to update iso 262 certification known as iso P pass pas 8926 which is has been accepted as a network new working item proposal to the iso community the reason is uh, not not all the criteria as what automotive industry following iso 262 will be applicable with the same like for exact as a, uh, to the in vehicle os that's the reason this ongoing effort are happening and a lot of contribution happening on shaping this update to the iso 262 uh, in terms of in vehicle os other than those there are other uh, uh, association like motor industry software reliability association that actually used to provide assistance to automotive industry in the application and creation within the vehicle system of safe and reliable software the mission of enabling uh, uh, this linux in a safety application that is elisa project is to make it easier for the companies to build and certify the linux based safety critical application system systems whose failure could result in loss of human life, significant property damage, and environmental damage. So ELISA is not just applicable in vehicle OS, but wherever like medical applications, where there is a uh, uh, human life is there, and any property, uh, anything related to damage is there. So we are also sharing this two special interest groups related to in-vehicle OS, along with their primary functions and goals. So one is CentOS Automotive Grade Linux, uh, Automotive SIG, and another is Automotive Grade Linux. So you can also find this kind of complete information of the respective groups and their documentation in the wiki pages. So for those who like to attend the participate in the events related to automotive or related to markets, you can attend these events uh, such as AGL at Embedded Linux, Embedded World Automotive Linux Summit, and Consumer Electronic Show. So here are a few important links for a future reference. We have also hyperlinked this, uh, most of the resources in the slides, wherever it is necessary. Uh, thank you so much for your interest in the session. If anyone has any questions, we can discuss. Thank you, Parth and Sarvesh. Amazing presentation. Uh, so far, there are no questions in uh, the Q&A sections. And uh, for the poll answers, there were some correct answers. So uh, the parent company of Zooks is Amazon and uh, is open pilot project uh, an open source version of in vehicle os no it's not and the uh, mm, correct iso standard uh, important for testing uh, soft, uh, of softwares in vehicles is uh, the third option 26262 <laughs> so uh, i uh, have uh, two questions uh, that that i would like to ask um, uh, so in the poll questions, you asked about the parent company of Zooks, um, and I'm curious to know who is the parent company of Waymo. So I can take that. So uh, parent company of Waymo is uh, Alphabet. So Alphabet is, a, if you know Google, it is, so it is a kind of a thing. So Alphabet is a parent company of Waymo. So they are heavily investing in that. Uh, so AI, ML, uh, kind of a capabilities also they are thinking of introducing uh, so that's the answer for it any other question thank you uh, and we have another question uh, in the q a section uh, as the future of uh, send os in uh, uncertain uh, do you plan to replace it with another this this throw uh, at this moment can't comment on it I mean, not sure what the maintenance have decided or the, uh, uh, I mean, the folks or the team who runs this uh, SIG, uh, what they have plans as of as of now. But uh, maybe I can check and get back. Okay, thank you. And also, I would like to ask um, about the, uh, uh, about the, 
uh, taxi service. Uh, I personally like the experience of uh, driving stick vehicles, but if I can simply use Waymo or Zooks as a taxi service, uh, why should I purchase an autonomous vehicle? Well, that's that's actually a good question. Uh, it, it makes sense if you already have some options to use autonomous vehicles in the form of a taxi. And if you already like the experience of driving, why would anyone purchase? So, of course, the answer is no. There is no compulsion or there is no uh, reason persistent enough for me to convince anybody to purchase that. I myself would uh, continue, I like to continue to drive and feel that experience. Um, but there is a middle way. You can go for a system which allows you to modify your car in a semi-autonomous way. For example, the the driving of the car itself won't be autonomous, but the parking or taking out of uh, taking the car out of garage or uh, keeping the uh, car centered in a lane, at least those functionalities can be uh, made autonomous. So that is not going to hamper our experience of driving the car, and which is which I believe is a, a better way than purchasing a fully uh, autonomous car. Awesome, thank you. Uh, okay, and uh, unfortunately our time is up, so uh, thank you, uh, Parf and Sarvesh, and thank, uh, thanks to all of you uh, who joined uh, this session. Uh, you can now uh, join the speakers in the work adventure or join another session rooms, and uh, in 40 minutes uh, at stage room you can look forward to today's first break activity, guided coffee tasting with double shoe. So um, enjoy and uh, bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.